الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدى Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We continue to talk about the seerah the most or one of the most valuable divisions of knowledge in Islam the division that deals with the biography of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم the mercy to mankind. We talk about, or we talked about, the things or the events that took place before he was born. And then we talked about his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now we're talking about how he grew up. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, grew up as a normal boy. Yet, he was known to be quiet he never put himself himself in trouble and he worked as a shepherd as he was in the custody of his uncle Abu Talib we are told that the Prophet وسلم, had never ever committed a major sin and there are few uh, 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 narrations that say or tell us that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once attempted to go to the city and do what everybody else does, you know, as a young, to have, fun, to have some fun. And it, we were told that he once asked one of his colleagues to take care of his sheep and he went to town just, at, uh, uh, just before sunset. And as he was going into town, just before going into their clubs, he heard some music coming from a nearby wedding. So he listened to the music and he fell asleep and woke up the following morning as the sun was in the middle of the, of the sky. So he knew that it was not meant to be for him to associate himself with such uh, uh, joyfulness that may lead to something that is not uh, uh, permissible. Throughout his years, not a single negative incident took place about our Prophet ﷺ. So usually, as we grow up, people remember us for a black spot in our history. They say, you remember when you broke that window? You remember when you had a fight with that man? You, nem you remember when you did this or stole that or uh, uh, any Anything. incident that would mark a stain in, our, in your record. The Prophet wasallam never ever had this stain. As he grew up, he was known among his peers, among uh, uh, his people to be the trustworthy and to be Honest. Uh, the honest, the faithful. To the extent that people, before leaving, would go to him as if he were to be a bank and put their deposits, put their belongings, uh, belongings with him. Because remember, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there were no banks, no institutions, no governments. So the, uh, it's survival of the fittest. If you're strong, you could easily go to your neighbor and take his money and maybe kill him. Nobody would be able to talk to you. And that is why they had Hilf al-Fudul, which is a treaty which was done before the revelation of the Prophet ﷺ. This treaty, as the history books tell us, was initiated because one man once came
came and had a transaction with uh, 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 Al-As ibn Wa'il, who was one of the dignitaries of Mecca. And Al-As ibn Wa'il deprived this man from his right. Probably. He did not pay him back what he deserves. So the man was furious and started to shout in Mecca, is this the way that you treat your people? Is this honest? Is this justifiable? So the other uh, uh, dignitaries of Mecca gathered and they said, no, this is unacceptable. We have to put an end to that. And they went to Al-As ibn Wa'il's house and they took the, the man's uh, uh, belongings and, and gave it to him. And from then they had this treaty, they had this agreement not to uh, allow anyone to uh, uh, betray or to be unfair to those who come to Mecca. This was at the time uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was young? This was at the time of the Prophet, when the Prophet Sallallahu was young and he himself said that I was called to join in, a, in this uh, a treaty or in this uh, agreement where if I was if I were to be called for a similar one in Islam I would have accepted because it was something the uh, honorable something that uh, uh, was just and fair throughout his youth as mentioned before the Prophet was known to be alayhi yes. the truth uh, trustworthy and the honest and whenever they see him they would say, he comes the truthful uh, or uh, the trustworthy, the honest uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He was not a shepherd for too long. He started uh, uh, working in trading. And there was this fabulous woman who was wealthy and was a descendant of a noble family. And at the same time, who... Uh, was beautiful but she was not married she was twicely widowed and she had children and she used to ask men to trade for her so she would give them money and she would ask them to travel to the Sham yes. or up north or to Yemen and whatever profit this man makes she takes 80 and gives him 20 or whatever percentage they agree upon. Even women were traders. Women were traders and, and, and Islam allows this. Islam allows or women... Or providing her husband uh, is dead or... Is the what? Her husband was dead. Yes, she was widowed twice. She was a widow. Yes. She did not have a husband at the time. She had lots of money. And Islam allows this, though we're, we're still... Uh, at, at, at the early stages we have not yet uh, uh, encountered Islam but nowadays if a, if a woman has money she has all the right to invest her money and work uh, uh, to enlarge her fortune in the permissible ways and within the Islamic boundaries Khadija may Allah be pleased with her and this was the woman's name she heard about Muhammad and his honesty. So she proposed to him that he takes part of her money and buy and buys goods uh, 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 with it and trade with, with that money to invest it. He went on one journey with one of her slaves. It's called Maisara. And when they came back, she was surprised to find that he made so much profit, not like any other man before him. And he was honest. He did not keep any self, anything for himself. Mm. On the contrary, he gave her everything, awaiting for her to give him his percentage. She sat with her slave, Maisara, who told her astonishing stories about his honesty, kindness, about his... Uh, truthfulness, never saying a lie, never breaking a promise, about being so kind to everyone around him. Being tolerant with traders and uh, sailors. He 
again, was the perfect human being. So whatever you can imagine, he was that man, alayhi salatu wasalam. The minute Khadija heard this, she could not help herself but to fall in love with him. Being an honorable and respected woman and knowing that he was, alayhi salatu wasalam, an honorable man and a, 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 a truthful and trustworthy person, she sent one of her friends just to mention her name and to test him if he is willing to get married or not. So the woman went and talked to the Prophet ﷺ and you know, started mentioning Khadija and how uh, uh, lonely she was and how uh, uh, the, the good attributes about her. And the Prophet at the time was 25 years old. <laughs> Khadija herself, the majority of scholars say she was 40 years old. There are some narrations that say that she was 28 years old. But we will go with the majority and consider her to be 40 years, years old. old. Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, sent her friend who proposed to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet agreed on accepting her. So he went to his uncle and told his uncle Abu Talib that I'm interested in marrying this woman. Abu Talib was happy because she comes from a noble family and also she is rich. rich. So they approach her uncle, they proposed to her uncle and her uncle uh, 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 approved of the marriage. She conceded and they got married. Then the age of woman is not a problem as we uh, believe today. Actually, the we age think. the age of a, a woman is not a problem, but it helps. See, this is not the case to marry someone who is older than you. But if the woman you're interested in has virtues that call you to marry her, if she uh, is a woman with excellent behavior, if she has Morals, a good faith, ethics, yes. a good faith and strong belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, committed practicing uh, a Muslimah, then the age is a secondary stage. And has money. Well, money is, is a helping factor, but again, personally speaking, I would not marry a wealthy woman. Because it's always better to have the upper hand. You do not want, at the end of the day, someone to insult you if she is rich, and she pays something to you and tells you that I did this for you and I did that for you. No, you have to be a good husband. It is your responsibility to support uh, uh, your wife. It's not hers to pay anything for you. I believe that we uh, have a short break, so stay tuned. So this is an open invitation for everybody to recognize God and enjoy His blessings in this life and His mercy in this life and in the hereafter as well. Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Each name has a meaning. Each name signifies a nature of Allah the Almighty which no one shares or is compared to Allah in it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was happily married to Khadija and they lived a very happy life. They had children and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known to be Abu Qasim because he had Al Qasim and he had Abdullah and they all died in their infancy and he had four daughters from Khadija. He had Zainab, he had Umm Kalthum, and he had Fatima, and also he had Ruqayya. And again, they all died in his lifetime, with the exception to Fatima, Fatima who died after six months after he died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had a very happy life with Khadija. 
And indeed, he had a very happy life because Khadija was the perfect wife. Wise, beautiful, knowledgeable. She took good care of our Prophet ﷺ, who she could not help but love him. The Prophet ﷺ, whenever he remembered Khadija, he would feel so faithful to her. And he had tremendous love to her, to the extent that she had a sister, and her sister's name was Hala. And whenever the Hala would visit the Prophet Sallallahu and we're talking about, about 10 years uh, down the line, 10, 15 years down the line, whenever she would visit the Prophet Sallallahu he would honor her, and give her presents, just because of the memory of Khadija. Khadija. And in one incident, he heard her voice once. And then he said, O oh Allah, Hala? The sister of Khadija and Aisha was there. So she could not help but feel jealous. So she said to the Prophet ﷺ, complaining in anger, Why do you always mention a woman that was 60, 70 years old, you know, skinny, and, and she started describing her in a, a very uh, nasty way? Out of jealousy, of course. She was a child herself. Why do you keep on recalling her and remember her, remembering her. Allah Azza wa Jal have, has given you far greater wives, better greater wives than her. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was outraged. He was so furious and angry that he said to her, by Allah, he did not give me better than her ever. She believed me when people thought I was a liar. She supported me with her money when people deprived me from shelter and support. She stood be beside me when everyone abandoned me. Allah Azza wa Jal has given me children from her where everyone else I was deprived from having children from. By Allah, I was not substituted. I was not given better than her. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Hearing this, said, by Allah, I swear that I will never mention her in a negative way after that. This shows you the amount of love our Prophet ﷺ had to Khadija. And indeed, she had all the right to be loved with all the support she gave our Prophet ﷺ with all this tremendous care and love she provided him. She deserved to be remembered after all these years, after she passed away, after the Prophet ﷺ married seven or eight or nine women after her, yet she, she still had a very, very special place in his heart. Nowadays we have a saying that says, behind every great man there is a woman. Could this saying be applied to the case of Prophet Muhammad and mo our brother? Mo most definitely, Khadija. but she was not the cause of him being great. But in, indeed, she was the best support back. any man back. could have. And going back to the way she treated the Prophet ﷺ, we don't have a lot of hadiths covering this, but we can understand by the indications here or there. For example, the Prophet ﷺ told us, and we were told, that while the Prophet and Khadija were there, the archangel Gabriel came. Khadija did not see him, of course. So the Prophet is telling Khadija, Oh Khadija, this is Gabriel saluting you. So she said, Wa alayhi salam. He's saying, Salamu alaykum. She said, Wa alayhi salam. She then looked at the Prophet. The Prophet told her, Khadija, Gabriel tells me that Allah Azza wa Jal is giving you the glad tiding of a big house of pearl, a big pearl that is your house. And in this house, there is no tiresome. You will not be tired and there is no loud noise. 
of nagging, of people shouting, it is quiet and it's a big pearl and you don't have to work in it. So this is a glad tiding and this house is where? In the paradise. It's in paradise. in paradise. Now, if we look at this glad tidings, one would wonder, why did the Prophet ﷺ mention to us that the characteristics of this house in paradise, that there is no tiresome in it, you will not be tired, and there is no loud noise and uh, 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 a noisy environment in it. It's very simple. Maybe because she used to suffer from uh, tiredness during the life of the Because Muslim. she used to work herself in her house and she suffered bearing six children. As a reward from Allah. As a reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. And what about the loud noise? Because she provided the Prophet وسلم, with the quietest environment for him to contemplate and to sit in for comfort. Before Dawah Allah Azza wa even, but also after Dawah to Allah Azza wa she gave him the right environment. Now look at our houses. And whenever I talk to the brothers complaining from their wives, the most complaint that comes on top of the list would be nagging. They always complain of them, their, their wives nagging, shouting, having a loud voice when speaking making a scene out of nothing. Khadija was at all not like this. She was the perfect wife. She was the perfect mother. And you can tell by her offsprings. When you look at Fatima, may Allah be pleased with her, you will find that she did raise excellent children. Because even Fatima, who was a young child, used to stand in front of the dignitaries of Mecca, the tyrants of Mecca, and shout at them and swear at them whenever they used to uh, 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 abuse uh, her father or do something that is wrong to him. She used to stand in front of him, although she was six or seven years old. This, sh this shows you the manner and way that these children were brought up. And all of this is accredited to the mother Khadija bint Khuwailid, may Allah, be uh, uh, pleased with her. Sheikh, I also heard a hadith. Uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, many, many men uh, are perfect, but only four women are perfect. Okay. And then mentioned uh, Asiya, Maryam bin Imran, and uh, Khadija bin Khuwailid, and Fatima bin Muhammad. Well, Fatima was not, as I recall, Fatima was not one of them. Uh, if I recall correctly, it is Khadija, Asya, the wife of Pharaoh, uh, uh, Maryam, and uh, the fourth one, I forgot, but probably it can be uh, 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 Fatima, it can be someone else, I'm, 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 I'm not sure of that. This is true, Khadija was among the four women that were perfect, because she was the perfect woman in the sense of her intelligence, of her wisdom, of her beauty, of her kindness to her husband. Tenderness. Because a woman can be ugly, but be the perfect wife at the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal because she's doing whatever she can to help and to provide her husband with a safe haven, with a nice house to live and, 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 and be there. Coming back to our story, the marriage was a perfect one except to the death of the, the, the boys, uh, Abdullah and uh, Al-Qasim, in their infancy. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had never get, got married uh, on Khadija? No, Allah. no. The Prophet وسلم, never took another wife until Khadija died, which shows the devotion and love that he had for her. And we have to know that the Prophet وسلم, was 25 years old when he got married. And when he remarried again, it was said that he was 50, 50 or 52 years old. So throughout this time, he only had one wife. And this wife was not a virgin. She was twice wedded before, which meant that it was not on the top of his list to have 
sexual relations. He was not a man of uh, dr uh, sex driven as you know the Westerners and the enemies of Islam tried to portray him. Otherwise, he would have married again and again and again. Or he would have chosen someone who was in his age or younger to enjoy himself with. But he did not even think of this until he was 50 or 52 years of age, which, which shows us that the Prophet ﷺ is not as his enemies portray him to be. Now, throughout this marriage, as mentioned earlier, they had a very stable life. But there were many events that took place before, just before his revelation. Everybody still trusted him. They all thought of him as a trustworthy, as the honest man. He had a, a, a position among the people. They accepted him because of his noble uh, uh, tribe, because of his honesty and trustworthiness, and because they could gain a lot from his wisdom. It's true, he did not talk a lot. But it's also true that when he talked, it was filled with wisdom. And they all respected his opinion that they usually would seek because he had a very sound uh, opinion and wisdom. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. Inshallah, we will meet again with you. And until then, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Mm-hmm.